This is this week's project. Give you a quick background on what happened here. Uh, there was a flood from a washing machine that is somewhere. Um, they had a vinyl backed cork flooring, which I'm not sure where it is. Probably have to go find that. And here's an example of the of the, the flooring. You can see how the top layer peeled off. Uh, my job is to remove what's underneath the cabinets in here uh, and install all new flooring. I gotta go all the way back into this room here. Jeez, I gotta go all the way back into this room here. It's not gonna be fun. There's a lot of turns, a lot of walls that are not perpendicular to each other or, or parallel to each other. Like I said, I've gotta get this flooring out from underneath these cabinets. Jeez, that one's a full, full shim there. So I'll be putting in my own composite shims to lift the cabinets up with the granite countertops on them. Getting this old flooring out as much as possible and the new flooring will not be going underneath there. It'll just be 100% composite shims holding the, uh, the cabinets up. Now this is an Airbnb. You can see it's got the kitchen. Uh, it's got a crazy bathroom in here. I wish I could show you. They have a huge tub inside this giant walk-in shower with no door this is rented out five days i got five days to get all the flooring in and all new baseboard i'm moving right along first cabinet flooring is removed underneath the oven flooring removed composite shims now i'm getting ready to remove the dishwasher i can tell the people who came in to try to do the initial tear out couldn't figure out how to get this dang dishwasher out because it's all kind of jacked up, messed up in there. See how that that's all sunken back in? Well, right through here is a screw that screws a tab that's attached to the dishwasher to the side of the cabinet. So what I gotta do is adjust the feet back up so that this hole actually aligns with the screw because they, they adjusted the feet down thinking that uh, it may have been getting caught by these tabs. These are those another option to mount it. I'm just going corner by corner. I've got an eight foot two by four and a block. And I'm just putting very slight pressure downward. I mean, I'm just raising the cabinet. It's really not raising the cabinet because the countertop hasn't moved. Just enough to wiggle out that flooring. And I've got all new shims going in. There's some shims there, shims there, shims there, shims everywhere, all along the back. I got two more corners, these two little inside corners, and this whole section is done. Right there, the shims I just put in, I'm gonna do the same thing under this leg right there. Here is the flooring, waterproof flooring. You still have to rip it out if your house floods though. Quick, easy installation. Now this goes right over these control joints. There is no underlayment. There is no vapor barrier. There is no padding. There's no nothing. It comes with a natural hypoallergenic cork backing. Mold and mildew resistant. You're probably wondering how I'm going to start this, lay this out. There's not much to it other than you have to start in a left hand corner. So I either need to start behind the refrigerator and go work my way this way or I got to start in that back bedroom and work my way this way. I'm thinking of starting in this corner over here and working my way since when you come into this place the only wall that is not going to be covered, the only reveal I'm trying to get at is I don't want to start in that corner or any other corner and have someone walk in the front door and they come over here and they see that has shifted and is going at an angle. I'm going to do, go with some knee pads on this job because I got to start another one right after this one. I can't be all gimping around. So we're going to give these a shot. Even though they bunch up behind your legs, they're only one strap. And you slip around. You're not supposed to put cabinets on top of these like they had before. This flooring expands and contracts and you need a quarter inch gap around the uh, around the perimeter 
when they have cabinets on them, especially with this, this L here, certain parts can't expand and contract and you can get them to pop apart. First row is, is going to be kind of run out. Um, second row, going to attach it and then it's so light and it moves so easily, I'll start shifting it around, uh, taking measurements across the room to the other wall. update on the gel zones. They were more painful to wear than getting down on my hands and knees. You guys are going to love this. Oh my god, he's working on the countertop. Boom, oh, look at that. It's cork. Granite countertop. You're not going to scratch granite with a piece of cork. Scraps here, ready to do the fill at that end, and I also, well, I've used all my scraps down at that end. I was ready to start this section of the kitchen, and I wanted to point something out. It's quite obvious to most people, but I have seen this so many dang places. Is you do not want this. And you don't want a, a repeatable pattern in the floor. I'll take you down here, just give you an idea. Of course, you can't really see the seams too well with this type of flooring, but it's completely ra random. It's not like that stair staggered, stair staggered, stair staggered. I hate seeing that. Even on a basement Airbnb, you won't catch me doing that. It's gonna be a random pattern. I make sure that when I come down to this end, I look over here and don't see anything that looks like it's repeating a pattern. I'll, I'll cut this off. Oh, maybe right around here, slide that in. Uh, but first I'll look over this way and make sure that I'm, so I won't, have it line up with this one, and I won't have it line up with this one. Somewhere in between, maybe somewhere over here, maybe even real short, down like there. This is highly resistant to scratching. So having your tools on here, dragging furniture across them, it, this flooring isn't gonna scratch. Oh, you gotta keep your blade tucked in but your hammer resting on it is not gonna scratch this floor. Okay, this floor is not meant to have any tiny gaps in this. That's a very teeny tiny gap, and you don't want that. Because when this piece goes over, it'll make things out of whack. So I'm gonna try to zoom in to right here. You can just catch your fingernail in there, and that's it. Use a scrap piece, and that gap is completely gone and super tight. So another tip, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence. Uh, this isn't very complicated to install this, so the don't expect anything groundbreaking as far as installation tips. Um, I ran out of concrete to cut on, so I've got a piece of scrap. This is actually my little hammer piece that I am cutting on. Uh, if you're not uh, proficient with a razor knife, get a bigger piece. Perfect.
almost did the splits. Alright, I gotta slide this whole thing this way. There we go. Two down, one to go. So I'm down here getting measure, ready to measure the piece I have to rip, and it's exactly one and three quarter inches on both ends. How the heck did that happen? It never happens like that. I'm at the stage where I have to start installing all these planks backwards. What I mean by backwards is I'm going the opposite direction and putting the pieces together uh, in the opposite of what they are intended to do. Uh, it's not that difficult. It does take a, a little extra monkeying around with each piece of flooring. Uh, see, like my first attempt, it, I didn't get it there. Just a, a little extra monkeying around to start working this way as opposed to working that way. I got my first two backwards pieces in and it seems to be going well. So this is a unique situation. So this piece here is the one I'm installing. I slid it back underneath the jam and then forward and, and I'm trying to manipulate that seam to close right here. In the middle I can lift up enough to get it in but on the sides not so much. What I'll do is I'll take a scrap piece just like that. A tap. I just give it a tap and boom it clicks right in. I'll show you this side here up close. Now you can see a faint line there. That is may look okay to you but it, it's not how the this flooring works and if it doesn't get set in and click together fully it'll come apart. Focus on that line there. Now you see it now you don't. Doesn't take much just to give it a little tap and it seats right in there and it's now it's permanently locked in.